Welcome to America, where the cattle and the cowboys have always been the backbone of the nation. But are they facing the end of an era? We got everything, beef, chicken, ribs. We're the only place put ribs in rocket ribs. As global demand for meat soars, billion dollar startups are taking on the meat industry. They're making meat with plants and growing meat in labs, cell by cell. So you don't see necessarily like a, a steak or a chicken breast growing <laughs> in culture. Cows, 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 cows. The cattlemen call it fake meat and say it will kill their traditions. This is cattle country. This is what God made this country for, is to raise cattle. It's a battle for the future of food. And this is worth how much, this chicken nugget? We say roughly around $100. But will this new meat pass the ultimate test? <laughs> These cows are quite curious about what I'm doing here. But I'm here to look into the industry that they're involved in. It's facing massive challenges from multi-billion dollar investments into new technology that's trying to take their job, their job as our food. Because the big question here in America at the moment is, what is meat? <laughs> Dawn at the KB Carter Ranch in Texas has started pretty much like this since the 1880s. A small tornado hurtled through last night and the team have a wet muster ahead of them. Texas is still the biggest cattle state in the US and it's still the home of the cowboy and the occasional cowbell. Cattle are a foundation stone of the American story. For centuries, this is how we humans have grown meat. But times are changing, and the cowboy's future is threatened by a high-tech revolution. And never get off the horse, because they were little kids, and if they got off the horse... This is Flash Cockrell. He's the ranch manager and he doubts taking a few cow cells and growing them in a lab can replace the real thing. With this cell-based meat, I mean, do you think it's meat? No, I don't. I don't no, it's not meat. Meat is a naturally on the animal. It's it, it, protein, uh, it's protein, yeah. but it's not meat. Do you think it'd be a shame for America to lose its kind of... Oh, yeah, so, yeah I, absolutely. This is, this is, you know, this is part of our... our our heritage, and it's, it's good to have people managing the land. These are meat animals that, that we, in, in the U.S. especially, you know, we, we still love, we still love meat. Yeah. Would I ever catch you eating a plant-based uh, burger? Not that I know of. If you do, they tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> The invention of meat in America is happening thousands of kilometres to the west of Texas, in Silicon Valley. This enclave of San Francisco has a reputation for shaking things up. We've already had its digital disruption, and now they're getting ready for meat disruption. In this scientific hub, they're trying to remove the cow from the burger. It may sound like Mission Impossible, but to them, it's just impossible foods. Yeah, yeah we're in over 7,000 restaurants now. These guys are the new masters of non-meat meat. Made entirely of plants, 
yet aimed squarely at carnivores. Nick Haller started with Impossible Foods when it began eight years ago. So this is where you can take all the ideas and they'll test it at a really small scale. What actually is driving the flavor, aroma, creation. Fueled by half a billion dollars in investments, some from Bill Gates, Nick says this is where the future is being made. So if you look closely, there might yeah. be some new products out there. I can't, I, can't, I can't tell what any of it is. Yeah. <laughs> and the company has a clear ambition driving its discoveries. So Impossible Foods was created to build the technology to solve one of the greatest challenges that we face as a civilization today. How do we keep feeding the growing population while maintaining and enhancing our land and our, and our environment? We're using animals right now, and animals are extremely inefficient. And so like a cow in the US as a technology is really the way we're using it. It's a 3% efficient technology. What does that mean? What does 3% efficient yeah. cow mean? So for every calorie, every gram of protein you put in, we put into a cow, we consume 3% of that out as meat. Impossible's in-house research is making some big claims. We use 96% less land for meat from a cow, 89% uh, less greenhouse gas emissions, 87% uh, less water than meat from a cow. Soy burgers aren't new, but the latest science is delivering a product engineered to taste exactly like meat. We are 100% aiming at the most stringent meat lovers of the world. Those are the ones we have to convert over to a more sustainable system. So we started in July 2011. And the first two years were all just basic research, understanding what actually makes meat, fish, and dairy foods taste so absolutely delicious. They learned there's one protein in meat, a protein called heme, that delivers all that chemistry as you cook. And so you can think about this as, in our blood, we have hemoglobin. It takes oxygen from our lungs to our organs and our muscles. And we use a protein called leg hemoglobin, where that heme, which drives all that flavor chemistry, is identical. So where do you get your heme from? So we found it in uh, legumes, so in the root systems of soybeans. Scientists here and at other startups around the world are building entirely new foods. Impossible's newest formulation uses specially designed soy protein, coconut oil, potato protein, and their eureka discovery, heme, which they can now manufacture in huge quantities using genetically modified yeast. Heavily patent protected, it looks like hamburger, and it even bleeds. Well, what is meat? So there's coconut meat, there's beef, there's pork, there's all kinds of different types of meat. And really what it is is a, a profile of fats, proteins, nutrients that consumers are looking for and a performance in food. What is meat? That really is the question. Does meat even have to grow on an animal? Across town, science fiction is meeting reality. Ryan Spears is head of a startup using stem cells to make muscle you can eat without killing the animal. His company, New Age Meats, made a sensation last September when they had a pork sausage cooker with meat grown entirely in a laboratory. And the invited crowd was introduced to Jesse, the pig that provided cells for the meat and lived to tell the tale. Do you have any uh, cell-based pork sausage for me to try? Uh, that's going to be an unfortunate no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, how much would it be worth? How much is one of those sausages worth at the moment? Uh, worth. So it's, well, our cost of production right now is around $190. $190 for a sausage? For a 100 gram sausage, yes. Bargain. Yeah. The real challenge of the industry is dropping the cost down and scaling up the production. So that's what we're working on now. And here's Nick, he's our interim CSO. Hi, Nick, how are you? Hi. Let's shake your hand. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to ruin the whole process. <laughs> I'm interested to know what the cells look like, and scientist Nick Legendre can show me. So this is just a small flask of mammalian cells that we're working with. All right. So you're going to see those small, kind of roundish-looking things. Those yep. are the actual cells in there. They're growing, they're attached to the bottom of the plate, yep. and they're growing in there. And that kind of yellowish liquid, that's called culture media. That has nutrients that keep the cells well-fed and, and happy. But we do have Growing cells outside an animal is tricky. There's no blood to feed them. 
Ironically, for a product that's often called clean, slaughter-free meat, most companies are currently using FBS, or fetal bovine serum. Uh, you know that it's not an ideal situation. Uh, it is, right now, it's a byproduct of animal agriculture. So around 8% of the, <clears throat> the cows that go to slaughter are pregnant. And so they find that they're pregnant, they're like, okay, well, this byproduct is this fetal bovine serum, which then goes into tissue culture. And so we need to quickly move away from that system just to do better science and make better products. How close are you to a product that could be rolled out into restaurants or mm -hmm. supermarkets? So we're about two and a half years away from that, yeah. Cell-based meat is a hot destination for investors. And I've been promised I can taste some of the product at another rapidly expanding company. This is Just Inc, also backed by Bill Gates, along with Hong Kong magnate Li Ka-sheng and others, with $250 million. It makes plant-based food and is also now moving into lab-grown meat. Co-founder and CEO Josh Tetrick is on a mission. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. I grew up on uh, Burger King chicken sandwiches and grew up in a, a very meat-centric culture. I think the idea of eating well, which I would define really simply food that tastes good, food that is healthy, food that is good for the planet, and food that people can afford, should be a basic right. Can I have a look through? Sure. Down in the lab, Just is focusing its energies on cell-cultured meat. Vitor Santo heads up cell agriculture. The cells are invisible to our eyes, and uh, so you don't see necessarily like a, a steak or a chicken breast growing in culture. <laughs> no. Right? So He's currently developing Wagyu beef cells really for hamburgers. So, so you take this and you put it in a kind of a, a machine that then grows it. I yeah. I think it's one of these machines over there. Are we allowed to look at that? Yeah, unfortunately, no. No? It's a little bit IP. IP. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. But this is like over the next okay. 10 years, cell-based and plant-based alternative meats are expected to capture 10% of the global meat market, a cut worth around $200 billion. You seem to be motivated by a kind of ethical background to this. Are your investors also motivated by that, or are they just motivated by I'm the sure profit? some are, some aren't. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have like 135 of them, so collectively, though, they're motivated to, to make an industry better and figure out a way to make money from making an industry better. So there it is. Up in the test kitchen, I'm about to taste one of the first chicken nuggets ever made in a laboratory. So this is the nugget. That is our chicken nugget. And this is worth how much, this, this chicken nugget? How much is the chicken nugget? We say roughly around $100 right now. $100, okay. But right now. No pressure, don't mess it's, this it's, up. It's, be it's better than the $250,000 burger they had yeah, a few yeah. years ago, so. The chicken cell protein right. there, does it have to be Pushed together. So we actually utilize our mung bean protein as a scaffolding system for this. Oh, okay, so it's got the it's got the cell-based chicken and it's got the mung bean. Yeah, because it just adds a little bit of extra texture to it. You call it cultured chicken. That's cultured it. chicken. Yeah. Because a lot of the process is very similar to how wine is made, how beer yeah. is made. And here we are. Yeah, right? here we are. And I think this is done. I'm just gonna kill the good. heat. So I'm just gonna let that sit and relax for a minute. It looks, yeah, it looks very similar to that nugget, isn't it? Yeah. And now my guinea pig moment has arrived. <laughs> no, <geez. laughs> See, I don't know. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up, I know that doesn't happen. Mm. What do you think? Tastes you're, like you're, a nugget. You're joining a very tastes, select, yeah, this, very select it, group. It tastes like a chicken nugget. Wow, that well, is amazing. That's because it's made with chicken. Just as hoping the nuggets will be on the market later this year. And they know they have to get over a yuck factor. Some have tagged lab-grown meat frankenfoods. When we think about the, the anxiety that some of this causes, I, it's really, it really is important to look back at history um, and realise that whether a car, whether milk, whether, you know, uh, a smartphone, it's funny uh, if it provides a better thing for a person, right? If it makes it easier to live the life that they want, people have a way of getting around it. The 
state of Missouri is the scene of the first battle in the new meat wars. Historically, it was the gateway to the Wild West. But this year, the city of St. Louis was the frontier for one of the new meats. There are no cell-based meats on the market yet, but plant-based is already causing a stir. And Impossible's latest formula went on trial at 59 Burger Kings in St. Louis. I decided to test it myself. Biscuit and a Whopper and one of the Impossible Whoppers, please. One of each. Yeah. Have you been selling a lot of the Impossible Whoppers? You sold out twice. You sold out twice? The trial has gone so well it's been rolled out nationally. With around 60% of America's beef being ground beef, burgers are a huge market to crack. So could I tell the difference? I just like a burger. It looks a bit different, but you know, when does a burger ever look good? There's a slight difference, but as to which one tastes more like meat, can't really tell. Does this mean I'm going to have to eat two burgers? <laughs> but I wondered how it would go down with hardcore carnivores. And for that, you can't go past the Rock and Ribs Festival in Springfield, Missouri. We have the meat that you can't beat. <laughs> This is an annual meat mecca, where samples of Missouri's famous barbecued meat are handed out for free. Best ribs here. We got everything, beef, chicken, ribs. We're the only place to put ribs in rocket ribs. Watch Chris over here pump out those ribs. Americans eat around 12 billion kilos of beef a year. And most of it looks like it's here. Chicken, pork or ribs, consumption's going up. And because of intensive farming practices, the price is kept low. Some of the stalls are competing for best cooked meat and take trays up to the experts for judging. It's a serious affair. I wondered how a plant burger would go amongst this lot. Surely they couldn't be fooled. So I whizzed out to get some. In amongst the meat shells, I found Beyond Meat, another high-tech soy product aiming for the meat market. It recently listed on the stock exchange at $36 a share and quickly rocketed up to be a multi-billion dollar company. Look at that, Impossible Burger. That could have fooled me. Let's see if it'll fool some experts. Its team oozes out as the burger cooks. Fake blood for your fake meat. Look at this one. Look at that. Look at the blood coming out. Beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. They're cooking a little bit better now. Cooking better, I know, thanks to your tips. I think we're ready for the test. It's actually really good. What do you think? It's good. Boom. Cool. Does it taste like beef? Tastes like hamburger. Tastes like hamburger. It's not a single animal. This is a plant-based one. No way. That's killer. Really? Yeah. Does it taste like meat, you reckon? It's good. Let me see. Let me have this one. I'd eat it, for sure. Delicious. Well, that was pretty surprising. But will this imposter fool the judges? So I want to, I want to get some expert advice on these burgers and sure. see, OK? Absolutely. Yeah. Autumn Suko and her husband David agreed to judge our special burgers. Surely these multi-award winners would pick it. Yeah, I don't have my... Mmm. Mm, very good. Yeah, you, you, did, you good. did great. That's you did fantastic. great with just salt and pepper. That's awesome. That's good. Well, that's because... Mm -hmm. Sometimes the basics are the best. The basics are the best. Now, would it, would it surprise you guys if I told you that this was 100% plant-based? There's mm. no meat in that. That would surprise that me, actually. That would surprise me. Because yeah. I'm a carnivore. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm a carnivore too. <laughs> Absolutely. May I? Yeah, go. Thank you. So that... Yeah. It's very good. I'm gonna steal some of this right here, actually. That's very tasty. Mm -hmm. mm. With reactions like that, it's not surprising the traditional meat industry is worried. And Missouri was the first state to kick back against these meats that don't use animals. I've arranged to talk to their cattlemen. 
deep in the heart of this Midwestern state, down in the Ozark Ranges. Bobby Simpson comes from a long line of ranches and he wants the family tradition to continue. I think I'm a fifth generation and that makes my son the sixth and then his sons or daughters will be the seventh. Bobby heads up the Missouri Cattlemen's Association and they're leading the charge against the new meats. What is it? We were proactive. We were the first state in, in, uh, in the union to uh, pass legislation on this, uh, what we call fake meat. This meat so, labelling law could prevent alternative meats from using words like burger and sausages. We're not opposed to new products. I want to make mm, that clear. Yeah. Uh, because, um, you know, we're, we're a country of free enterprise, and that's, you know, I like that. But uh, we want to be, we want people to know what they're buying. We want truth in advertising. We want labels that say, where these products came from, mm -hmm. or how they're made. What are the particular words you're worried about? Is it the term meat? I mean, if somebody says plant-based meat, are you fine with that? Yeah, or... we don't want them to use beef. Beef, so beef. And, and we don't want them to say, this is hamburger. But, you know, if beef was grown in a lab, isn't that beef? I don't think it's beef, it's meat. <laughs> we do not want them to call it beef, because yeah. that's our term, that's our, those are our products out there that you're affecting when you're using, you're using our good name to sell yeah. your product, that's what we don't want. Missouri is one of the country's biggest agricultural states, and up in the capital, legislators are defending their laws to protect their sacred cows. We begin with the truth of all truths, the truth about God. This is a God-fearing community. Aside from the Almighty, they honour the flag, the family and free enterprise. And in the spring, when the woods burst with blossom and dogwood, it's time for hunting and fishing. And yet God cannot be silenced. They have a heartfelt sense there's a natural order to the world. Because in the heart, in the humanity of every one of us is this need to know God. When I arrived at the State House in Jefferson City, the session was just starting. May we stand forth with the historic members of the past who achieved righteousness, tamed wickedness, and contributed to the ethics of their day. Representative Jeff Knight sponsored the meat labeling bill. And the House says, amen. Um, well, my argument there will be our farmers and ranchers um, grow these cattle like God intended them to be grown through a food chain. Uh, being given the proper nutrition, taken care of well, and then, you know, harvested, um, production, processed, and, and given back to the public. Missouri led the way on this legislation to define what meat is. Uh, why did that happen in Missouri? Uh, several years ago, our dairy industry in the United States got hit really hard with uh, soy milk and almond milk. In turn, uh, it has killed the dairy industry um, all over the United States, but especially in Missouri. What are the cattlemen most worried about? We just want them to be labeled correctly, to head off. As Jeff's got an go example of the type of labeling he says the law is trying to prevent. Uh, yeah, there's the actual picture of the package of chicken tenders with a picture of a chicken. This is beyond chicken strips, lightning season. Yeah, OK. And plant base is right down the bottom. And there was no chicken in the package at all. So that's the kind of thing you're trying to stop. You think We're, people yeah. are... We just want the consumers to know exactly what they're getting. Twenty-five other states are now bringing in meat protection laws. And the alternative meat industry is fighting back. They're suing Missouri, and I've come up to Washington to find out more about the battle. Bruce Fredericks heads up a not-for-profit called the Good Food Institute. It's a party to the legal action. He calls it a meat censorship law that's violating the right to freedom of speech. Plant-based meat is meat. Um, clean meat is meat. 
It's just meat produced in a different way. And this is where the bill comes in that says you can't call it, you know, that in actual fact meat is, is something that comes off a slaughtered animal and that's what they're trying to stop you doing, is saying this is actually meat. And it's exactly the same as if you said this isn't a camera. 99.9% .9 of photogra photographs are taken on this thing. It's a camera or it's got a camera on it. The Missouri legislation bans meat nomenclature, even if it says plant-based, even if it says vegan. And you can literally go to jail for a year for calling a veggie burger a veggie burger. I mean, isn't that fair enough? Well, uh, no, it's, it's rank protectionism. Uh, it's basically, I mean, it's basically uh, a command and control economy. Uh, it's something you would expect out of North Korea, not the United States of America. Uh, they are afraid to try to compete on a level playing field with these products. But what about that packaging for Beyond Meat's chicken strips? It says Beyond Meat. Like the biggest words on the package are Beyond Meat. Uh, meat. But couldn't you think that that was a chicken product? I would be very surprised if anybody thought that was a chicken product. I decided to check out if people would be fooled by such packaging. And outside a rodeo was an ideal place. What about these chicken strips? These dudes were hanging out the back. This product here, have you guys ever eaten it? Yeah, it's a hamburger, ain't it? It's a hamburger? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's big. Oh, it's vegan. Do you think that you could get confused and buy that in the shop if it was next to the other burgers? Probably. 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 I just grab and throw. You just grab and throw? That's you right. don't do a lot of reading when you're picking it up? No, man, if it looks like a burger, it's going in. Is it real? Well, what do you think? Is it real beef or is it vegetables? To be honest with you, man, I wouldn't eat it. You wouldn't eat it? I wouldn't even look no, at it. No, you see, it's vegan burgers. Yeah, right. so you wouldn't eat it? I wouldn't touch it. No, why's that? Because we want that right over there. You want that one? <laughs> Turns out these blokes do want to know what type of meat they're buying. What about, they're talking about growing meat, like meat actually from an animal, but doing it in a lab. So it doesn't come off the body of an animal. It just gets grown in a kind of dish. It's grown from cells, so it's actually the same as meat. Would you eat that? No, sir. With the lab and the growing it, you don't know what they're putting into it. Yeah. So, straight off the hoof's best. While these guys might prefer off the hoof, I wonder if most Americans know how their meat is actually produced. Factory farming and feedlots face significant criticism on environmental and welfare grounds. Good evening. We're from Australian TV, Australian Broadcasting Corporation. We just, uh, the cowboys here don't ride horses and aren't so camera friendly. Uh, how big is this particular place? How many cattle have you got here? We've got 4,700 right here. Right? 4,700, yeah. okay. So then, Australian Broadcasting Corporation. We weren't welcome to film inside. A show called Foreign Correspondent. In the United States, nine out of 10 cows don't finish their life on the ranch. They're taken to feedlots, like this one in Missouri, and intensively fed to fatten them up before slaughter. Now, this is only a small one here. This is a tiny operation. But around America, 40% of meat comes from feedlots like this, but with 32,000 head of cattle or more on them. Huge industrial scale operations. For all their size, the cattle industry defends feedlots, saying that they're efficient, produce high quality meat, and that the animals are well looked after. As for methane emissions, they claim they're overstated. Do you think that the new change in this debate that threatens you is the climate change debate? I guess the methane emissions from cows. Well, I think that that's just a kind of a fraud on our consumers that, that we're putting out these emissions. Uh, before we had cattle, we had a million herds of buffalo in, it, in this, and they, and they put out the same kind of emissions. And I think agriculture, really in the big picture of things, is very minute in putting bad things into the environment. Well, you're not gonna find an environmental scientist uh, or anyone outside of the beef industry itself that will tell you that the beef industry is environmentally friendly for any reason, uh, including that one. What's your name? Rhett. Rhett? Mm -hmm. Are you a cowboy? Yes. <laughs> what are you going to do when you grow up? You got to work on the farm. You want to work on the farm, are you? Bobby has a big investment in the future of the cattle industry. And dressed in their Sunday best, so do the younger generations.
These laboratories in San Francisco seem light years away from the ranches of the Midwest, and yet they're caught in this battle over our meat dollar. But can these disruptors convince us that their products are not only better for the environment or animals or health, but also that they're normal and affordable and something we can eat every day? Because in the end, I mean, what's in a name? Cattle, soy, cells or beet? Will it really matter if it tastes like meat? Thank you.